This is Carl at uh, National Library Detroit. I'm going to walk through this Flagstaff Superlight. It's a 2020 model year, and the model number is 26RBWS. Okay. So I'm on the door side of the trailer at the rear. <clears throat> so you can see this has a, this model has um, power stabilizer jacks. You got one switch operates both of the rear jacks, and then another switch up front operates both of the front jacks. Your step folds inside the trailer. Um, if you're on uneven terrain and you need to adjust the length of the legs you can pull this pin there's one on each side here pull it all the way out and you can adjust the legs accordingly okay uh, you got a power awning with an LED light strip this is a TV mount here and then you have antenna out here and power outside speakers this this vent here is for the range hood that's over the over the stove. Um, if you're going to run the fan in the range hood you have to push up, you can't really see it, but in each corner there's a little a little um, latch that you push up on and it'll allow the baffle inside to flap freely. Uh, so if you're exhausting you want to do that to make sure that it can, uh, can flap freely unobstructed. Okay so this rail here was where you hang your grill. Uh, your grill, in this case you get a griddle type grill. It's got a, a big cast iron type surface on it. But you can see this over there. There's also a small hose with it. That LP hose has to be plugged in when you, when you use the grill of course. So you plug one end into the grill which is hanging here. Then you're going to plug the other end in down here. Let me get down so we can see it here. Well, give me one second here to adjust the monitor. Right there, so you can see it. It's it's got a valve on it too, so you make sure the valve is is parallel with the fitting, so you can uh, to turn on the gas. But it's just a quick connect. Okay. Now, this of course is just the um, vent for your furnace. Now you'll see there's a hole here. Now this hole. Uh, basically runs, there's a shaft inside here with a pin going through it. I know you probably can't see it, but you'll have to trust me that it's there. If you were to take this, this longer uh, crank, the one I'm showing you right now, the long brassiest color one, you can actually put it onto that, onto that shaft with a pin going through it. You can actually crank the main slide out in manually. So if you had a a failure of some sort, you can always crank it in and out uh, in an emergency, which is a good thing. Also, you can see while we're talking about cranks, there's another crank right there above it, a small one. That one, if your tongue, your power tongue jack was to fail, right, you can just uh, pull this plug on the top, this rubber plug, put the crank on there and crank it manually also. Alrighty. So this is the outside of your water heater. It's a six gallon water heater. Okay, it works on gas or electric. It's, I want to show you that there's a switch right here. Let me pull that put tape off there, hold on. There's a switch right here. It uh, goes from on and off. And it operates the, um, I'm having a hard time getting this monitor so I can see here, so please bear with me. There's a, beside, behind this cover here, there's a, an electric uh, heating element. Uh, so this switch here actually is a, is a switch to turn that on and off, just the electric heating element. The other switches are inside the trailer, but that, that switch is kind of a holdover, so I just want to make sure that you understand that it's there. Also, this is where you drain it. It's, got a, it's a plug. Obviously, it takes an inch and a sixteenth socket, six-point socket. Keep in mind there's an anode rod attached to it. All right. Now... This, this is a pressure release valve here, so um, you never pull the drain plug or release the pressure, obviously, when there's hot water in the tank. I know that's pretty straightforward, but 
Um, nevertheless, make sure though it's cooled down completely before you do that so you don't accidentally scald yourself or worse, so. Okay. Now, your, um, next to your grill outside, you can hang this table too. That hangs right next to the utility table. This is your 50 amp cord, uh, 30 feet long. This is a 50 amp system and you can re reduce it down. So uh, if you need to, but it's a, it's a 50 amp because it's pre-wired for a second air conditioner if you want to ever add one. This of course is your front stabilizer switch. Remember why I told you one switch operates both, both jacks on the front, another one both jacks on the rear. All right, so power tongue jack, it's a little hitch light of course, up and down. Two deep, or two um, LP tanks that are filled. It's got an automatic changeover regulator, so it changes over automatically. Two deep cycle marine batteries. And you can see right here, you can barely see it, this red thing here, that is a kill switch for the battery. So if you ever want to shut the batteries off when you put it into storage so they don't drain down, you can shut it off. Otherwise, you always leave that on, okay? All right, docking lights here, pretty self-explanatory. I'll give you a closer look at your griddle now. This is the griddle I was telling you about right here. This is the quick connect hose. Uh, this end would go into the fitting, the quick connect that's underneath the trailer. This quick connect here goes to the fitting right here on the back of the uh, griddle. And this is the rack that it hangs on. Okay. Okay, so you have two gray tanks in this trailer. This is the second gray tank right here. Right, so it's pretty straightforward. Now you of course have uh, um, another black and gray tank and that operates here. So let me see here. Okay, so you have your gray valve there. You have a black valve there, right here. Okay, so you're gonna put your hose on here obviously goes to the dump station, you dump the black first. The black valve is for the black tank, which is toilet water and waste. So you always will, will um, um, dump that first. Then, then you'll dump the gray tank second, just because it's sink and shower water. It's cleaner water than the black water. So it helps wash out the hose somewhat. Okay, after that, you can leave your black tank valve open. And then you can uh, hook a hose, the hose at your dump station, right here. This is the black tank flush. Um, you put the hose on there, you turn it on, it'll spray the inside of your black tank and clean it out really well. So you can, uh, you know, the sensors will be clean and they'll give you a good, reliable reading and that sort of thing. So that's, uh, that's important. Like it says here, always make sure the black tank valve is open before you turn on the water. Now the most common way to get water into the trailer is this uh, right here. This is the city water hookup, so you're just going to hook up right here. You're going to uh, uh, turn on the water and it pressurizes your whole trailer. Now, if you happen to go to a campsite that has, uh, or a campground that has campsites that do not, does not have plumbing on, on the campsites themselves, so you can pre-fill this tank right here. This is your fresh water tank fill. It's got an onboard fresh water tank. You can fill it and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. So even if you don't have city water, you can plan ahead and fill your tank and still the trailer will operate just like it does have city water. Of course, this is where your 50 amp shore cord hooks up. All right, that's just obviously a shower, uh, a sprayer slash shower for, for kids and dogs and feet and what have you. Got both hot and cold water. All right, so um, you can, this has a ladder on the back, which is really good because it makes it really convenient to inspect your roof. All trailers, the roof needs to be inspected every 90 days or three times a season. Spring, middle of the summer, and the fall, for example. You go up there, you look around. Every place you see uh, sealant from the factory, you're going to look at it. Make sure there's no crack in your separation. You can inspect it for years and not have to touch it up. You can go a couple years and then and find something that has to be touched up. So the thing is, somebody has to inspect the roof on a regular basis. It's very, very important when you own a trailer. <laughs> Excuse me. You can walk up there no problem, and uh, also check the rubber, the, the, the rubber membrane on the roof to make sure that there's no uh, tear in it from a tree branch or road debris or anything like that. So just, just give it a gentle look over, okay? Also, this um, housing here is telling us that, that this is pre-wired for a backup camera, so you can always use a Furion backup camera in here if you choose to. 
Also, one more thing, this is a, a receiver, so you could put a, an attachment on the back. It, I think there's a 200 pound limit. Let me look and see what it says here. I don't know if I can see with my glasses the way they are. Uh, 300 pounds, it says. That would be, that would, uh, that would include the, uh, the attachment itself plus whatever you're gonna put on it. Some people put a bike rack attachment, some people will put a, uh, uh, it's just like a, um, a, what would you call it? So they, there's, there are boxes that go on the back and there's one that's just a, a platform that you can strap things to. I'm kind of an hard time coming up with the word, but, um, so, okay. So that's it all the way around. Let's, let's go inside and see what's happening. Uh, I think I covered everything on the outside. I always wind up forgetting something, but okay. All right, so this is the monitor panel. Um, now I told you about the water heater. First of all, never run the water heater unless there's water in the tank. Uh, you can you can tell if there's water in the tank. You can if there's if it's under pressure, you can pull the pressure release valve and a little will squirt out. For example, never do it when the water's hot, obviously. But if you're hooked up to city water, you can come inside here. For example, you can do this at any hot water faucet, and you would just turn this on, and um, if it's empty, just air will come out, and then as it fills, it'll be a mixture of air and water, and sputtering, and then uh, eventually you get solid water coming out. When you get solid hot water, solid water coming out of the hot water valve, you know the tank's full. Um, but you have to, you can't run it dry without, without any uh, water in it, or else. Uh, you know, it will be, have to be repaired, obviously, and and that's not a warranty issue. That would be a user error, so keep that in mind. Okay, so here we go. The, to light it on electric, remember I told you there's a second switch in, on the lower left-hand corner outside, but you, you would use this switch too. They're redundant, but like I said, that one's kind of a holdover. Uh, to light it on gas, you do this. Um, to, to turn on the water pump that I told you about, so you would use that when you're pumping water out of the tank, the fresh water tank, or you also use it when you winterize too. On the, the water panel I showed you outside with the hookups on it, with the front city water hookup and the uh, black tank flush, there's also another uh, hookup there and it, it's basically that's for winterizing the trailer. You'd have to research it a bit, but you could actually dry antifreeze through that port. Um, I'm getting off subject a little bit here, but that, to access that, that just so you know, we're right here, let me show you where we're at. We're right here in the, underneath the lavatory in the bathroom. You would pull these screws out and take these panels out, and you'll be able to see the water pump. There's a selector valve that will allow you to select that port on the side to draw the antifreeze in, for example. There's also a water filter canister in there. There's no, canister, there's no filter in it now, but you come up with, you come with a starter filter right here and this white thing here is the wrench, right? So the bottom line is you have to, you can only use this for one season. So you put a new one in after you dewinterize it in the uh, spring and then uh, before you winterize it in the fall, you take it out, you, you throw it out. So this is just a carbon block filter. It's, it's good for sediment. It'll take the chlorine taste out. It'll, if you got well water that, that has a lot of minerals in it, it'll definitely clean up the taste quite a bit and the smell in some cases. So it's it does it's not like it's not like it's reverse osmosis or something like that, but it's still a really good filter. Okay. All right. I got a little off subject there, off track, but here we go. Um, all right. So you can test your battery here. I don't know if you can see they all they almost all of them lit up. I just plugged it in, so it's charging. Uh, fresh water is is two thirds full, but that'll be empty when you pick up. We're just water testing it. Your black tank, which is toilet water and waste, is at a third with water in it. Uh, gray number one is a third, and gray number two is a third. So the reason they have a third is because we, we, we run it up and down to make sure all the, all the, the sensors will tell you how much water is in there, which is part of testing it. So, so keep that in mind. Once you get past, past two thirds with the gray and black, you're going to have to start thinking about dumping them. All right. To operate your awning, you just push extend. And here you have it right here going out, as you can see. Okay, so that'll go out eight feet, um, just so you know. When you see the awning tube exposed, you'll know you're out all the way. Also, once you're out, you can, you can tighten this knob. You can pitch the, the uh, awning, any, any pitch you want, on the front of it or on the rear of it. And you can tighten it up, and it'll stay in that position if you need to. Make sure you always loosen that, though, before you bring it in. 
okay so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna roll it all the way here I'll just retract it here also like you can see you got a LED strip there okay good so your two slide rooms um, number one here it which is your main slide room I showed you how you can actually crank that manually okay if you had to when you hear that ratcheting sound that you just heard, that's, that'll happen going in or coming out. When you hear that sound, you just take your finger off the butt. That means it's all, all the way extended or all the way retracted. They do that so you can't overextend it or retract it. It's a, it's a built-in safety thing. So, um, number two is, is your wardrobe slide out there. That one's a little different. It's an Aki slide. Um, that's the brand. So you still can crank this manually, but you have to use a, 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 a drill and uh, you have to use a uh, attachment that that fits on the dr on the back of the motor. It's kind of hard to explain, but you would basically put put the uh, attachment on, put hook your drill up to it. And you can actually wind it in and out with your drill. If you read your directions, or better yet, go online to online manufacturers' videos, it'll tell you everything you need to know about that. Just so you can get yourself out of trouble if you ever have to. Okay. All right, so let's see. So these are lights, obviously. Step light. This one that says Wi-Fi is the Wi-Fi Ranger. Now the Wi-Fi Ranger is on your roof. It's, a, it's basically a Wi-Fi signal booster, its main function. You'll see it, it's up there. It's got two little rubber antennas sticking out of it. Um, I don't know if you can see this because of the light, but on this sticker here, um, it'll say Sky 4... LTE, I think it's 9189, yeah, 9189. So you look on your cell phone or your tablets, and that'll when you see that, that's the Wi-Fi Ranger. That's your trailer. So you would obviously put the passwords in, uh, so it'll hook up automatically when, when you need to with, with your devices. Then the, the middle number is, uh, is a temporary password. Um, so you know you, that's how you get into everything until you change them. All right. And then the, the third line here, it says control panel. This is a address you put into your browser. So you would, whoops, I got to, you put this, this uh, into your browser and it'll take you to the page uh, online that'll, that'll see everything that your Wi-Fi ranger sees. So you'll be able to see all the Wi-Fi out there, all the public Wi-Fi, uh, locked, uh, you know, all this stuff. So you would basically pick out the campground Wi-Fi and if they give you a password, you type in their password and then you're attached. The reason you want to do this is because it's a super good signal booster. Really good. Also has a built-in firewall. Okay. So, one, it does one other thing. If you wanted to, because this is a Sky 4, you can actually, you, you would go through your, whoever pro provides your, your cellular service, you would, it would just be similar to getting a, like a SIM card and you pay a monthly fee and you can actually have cellular service uh, from the trailer through the Wi-Fi Ranger. Most people don't do that unless they maybe work from the trailer like some people do if they're into sales or whatever and they travel a lot. Or um, if you got if you really really have to have more reliable service um, you would do that. But generally people just use the free version which is the Wi-Fi Ranger. Like I said now we're starting to say in your packet here there's a, uh, a documents for basically everything that's in here. Also, you can go online, you just put in the model and the uh, model number and the manufacturer and, and that sort of thing and, it would, and, and look at actually man, manufacturers' uh, online videos uh, and you can also learn a lot from that if you have to in a, when you can't quite remember things. Like the Wi-Fi Ranger, a lot of people will call their number and they'll actually talk them through it and I'm told, I don't know this for a fact anymore, I, I heard, I've heard that they might have changed it, but and as far as I know, you can still call and they can actually operate it from wherever they're at. I think they're in Idaho or Utah, one or the other, and they can help you set it up from there, for example, okay? Or you could get a 12-year-old kid to do it for you, one or the other, <laughs> okay? So, um, obviously, this is your thermostat. You've got two zones. Uh, you, you go through the different systems, heating, cooling, whatever, and mode, you know, on, off, automatic, high, low, those are sort of things. Um, you have another zone in here, but it's not used right now. You can see that there's a sticker here on your front that says this is pre-wired for a second air conditioner. So if you wanted to get a second air conditioner, it would drop right in this vent hole, 
and the wires are already there and you could hook it up so that would be zone two if you went that far also if you look at right here a AC uh, sensor prep and they're just telling us that if we remove this panel and fish around inside there we'll find wires that uh, that are already already passed through the wall to hook up a sensor for zone two so it could it could sense the temperature and everything in zone two and operate correctly so it's pre-wired that's why it's a 50 amp system okay um, so while I'm standing here this is the antenna it does not go up and down anymore you just push up on it and rotate it if you need to fine-tune it and uh, over here is your TV obviously uh, you have uh, remote controls over there on a the table right now you also can pull this out for storage behind the TV um, well I've got this open this you can see hopefully you can see this it's God I'm gonna get a different position here let me see nope Oh great. I think you might be able to see that there how this is green. Right. So you can shut it off if you need to or if you want to. But you always want it on when you're trying to use the antenna because it will it'll it's a signal booster. It's all it's uh if you don't let's put it this way, if you don't have that on, you won't get a good picture over that over the antenna. It'll be all a lot of noise, it'll lock up, that sort of thing. So always want to make sure that that's on. Uh, your radio and play disc player displays CDs and DVDs. Obviously, uh, it's an AM/FM radio. You can you can um, stream off of this USB right here. Take all your favorite albums and put them on one stick and take them with you. Uh, you can hook up with Bluetooth from your phone or tablet, and you can stream that way. Also, you can go into the system right here uh, through this HDMI. This is an N. So if you had a game machine, for example, for rainy days for kids or grandkids, uh, you would plug straight into there and go right into the system, okay? Um, so it does a lot. There's also three speaker zones. One is this room, two would be your bedroom, and three is outside. You can set the, the um, let's see, you can set the, the source and the level of your outside speaker independently, so you could be using the watching a, a DVD in here and listening to FM radio outside for example. To do that I can't get too much into because there's, there's too many things to, I have to show you but the Z3 vote button means zone 3 which is outside if you push that it'll let you send a different source and a different volume than what's being used inside okay keep that in mind alright okay so the refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator that means it'll run on 110 AC or it'll run on LP gas. There's two switches up here. This is on and off. Okay. This one here is, is this energy source. You will go to auto, which is this one right here. So you push it so auto's on. Auto means electric. Um, the reason they call it auto is because it automatically searches out 110 AC. If it uh, can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to LP gas, right? Or better yet, if you're uh, you leave early in the morning on a super hot day and you're going out adventuring for the whole day uh, an hour after you leave the power in the campground goes out well it will sense that and it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil the food so that's where you're going to leave it you can run it just on gas if you're pulling it down the road but keep in mind if you don't if you don't run it dedicated on gas and you still have it on auto it will sense that there's no 110 and it'll switch to gas automatically anyway the other thing to know about this is this device here is called a thermistor right the thermistor is not the, this is just a clip here the thermistor is actually attached to this cable it's like a cylinder that and this clip holds it to this fin as you see from the sticker here the higher you go with it the cooler it gets warmer lower so you're gonna pull it push it up like like I just did to the wire back here is taunt that's up as far as it goes and you're just almost always gonna run it like that occasionally if it starts to frost up you might have to back it off if it's getting cold outside or something but nine times out of ten, you're going to have it just like that, all the way up, okay? And that's it. It's very simple. It is gas absorption, so it's going to take a long time to reach operating temperature. It does not have a compressor, so it, it takes a while. So you want, to, you want to think six to eight hours in advance, or better yet, start of the day before. All right. Okay, so this device down here ouch, is, my, uh, is the... Uh, um, power converter. So what this does is converts 110 AC uh, to 12 volt DC. 
So right here you can see we got regular household current here, 110 AC regular household type circuit breakers, and they're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side, and you see you got 12 volt fuses here, and they're all labeled, all right? So this is where the 12 volt DC comes from. There's two ways that, that trailer can get 12 volts. Number one is from your battery up front. Um, this particular trailer is a flagstaff, so it has two batteries. Both batteries are they're deep cycle marine batteries. They're wired together as as 12 volts. So it's it's still 12 volts. It just double the storage capacity, right? So um, basically, uh, your uh, your trailer, everything that works on 12 volts, can draw power from that till it goes till it wears down. Uh, now the the alternator on your car will charge your batteries when you're pulling it, and when you're plugged in at the campground to 110 AC, this power converter will charge the battery too. And it's actually semi-smart in the sense that it'll, it can sense how much energy the battery has and uh, act accordingly. It'll send, if it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs. If it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple to it. So it's, a, it's kind of a battery tender in a sense more than the charger. Um, also, if any of these 12 volt fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up and you can see them glowing through this tinted plastic right here. Okay. And like I said, it's a battery charger also. Now the device next to it is the LP and carbon monoxide detector. Okay, so I'll just set it off so you can hear it. Goes through two self-tests. Another one coming up. And back to green. So um, if that goes off, it's detected carbon monoxide or LP gas buildup. So obviously you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. Um, it should always be green like it is. If it's not, you get it serviced because it's a very important thing to have. Also, it has one other function. If it beeps the same tone that you just heard, but very, very slowly, it's telling you that your battery's low. So it actually detects carbon dioxide LP gas, and it'll beep really slowly if it, if it senses that your batteries are low. Okay. So, that's an important device, of course. Okay, so now your range. Right there. So all I did was turn the knob to light and then push the sparker like that and it lights. Very simple. Obviously a knob for each burner. Now if you get to the oven it's a little bit different. Down here at the very bottom all the way to the back you may be able to see it but there's a pilot light. You can see, maybe you can see it sparking there. I'm not sure if you can or not. But what you do is you'll Go to pilot. It's hard to read the writing on these uh, these knobs. It's very subtle. So, but right now I'm 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 uh, at pilot, and then I depress this and hold it. That's the key. So you're you're still holding it in. It's depressed. Then you're going to spark it here. When it lights down here, you continue to hold this for another 10 seconds or so, and um, then after a 10 10 15 seconds, whatever, it'll heat up, and then you go to operating temperature. And it cycles on and off like an oven does. But when you shut it off, the flame goes out, of course. But so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. What a long way to tell you that, but that's the bottom line. Also, you always want to have this top closed when you're traveling. All right. Now, I showed you where the, the vent was on the outside with the baffle that you have to open and shut. You can see there's your fan, light, um, your uh, microwave works like any other microwave. Uh, you have a GFCI here. There will be two of them in this trailer. All the plugs are wired wild through a GFCI, even the one on the outside. So uh, if you're using the plug outside that pops, you're going to reset it in here. Um, I, it's either it will be either this one or the one in the bathroom. Uh, you, you can't tell till till you've used it to find out, but it'll be one or the other. And all the plugs are wired through them. All right, so you have a that's an extension for your countertop. You've got your wardrobe, um, escape window, escape windows, you, you operate it like this, you push it all the way through, and uh, then you'll pull this red tab and pull the screen out, and then you can roll out the window if you're in a, an emergency, okay? You can put, pull up the bed and there's storage underneath, all right? You should always travel with this table in the down position. 
Because if you don't, you hit wild bumps and it could break a window or damage your woodwork or whatever. It's pretty heavy. So keep that in mind. To, to drop this down, you're going to push this tab to the right, this yellow tab, and that'll unlatch it. Then you just fold it at the hinges and set it onto these cleats here. There's four of them, two on each side. You set the tabletop under there. Then you can use the back cushion backs to fill in the space and you gotta you travel like that but it's also another bed. So if you got visitors you can always do that. Um, I showed you this basically. The toilet paper roll for example you, most people don't use them because it's hard to find a good spot to mount it. You have to hit a stud or else it'll just pull out of the wall. Most people just use a stand. That's why the factory doesn't install them and neither do we. It's up to you if you want to do it. Okay there's a spatula that sort of thing in there also. Alright so this is your this is your uh, hide-a-bed here. It's got three foam panels. So you just basically pull the backs out. Then, here, let me see here. I'll show you. I'll actually show you how it works here because I'm thinking thorough today, so we'll, get, we'll go through the whole thing. Okay, so you remove the backs. Then you're going to grab it right down here in the front, right here. And you pull it out like so. You're going to, excuse my camera work here, you're going to fold out the legs as you can see like so. Then drop it down and then you have this here. Let me back up so you can see it. All right and then you flip the back cushion forward to finish up. There's also a little bit of storage under here for like sheets and, and blankets that sort of thing. And there you have it. It's actually not a bad bed. It's uh, not like hide beds used to be. It's a lot more comfortable. It's all foam, so it's really not so bad. Okay. Obviously, that's your your uh, smoke detector there. You've got a big sliding door for the bathroom, a barn door on a rail. This is the other GFCI. I told you there'll be two in the trailer. Keep that in mind. I showed you underneath here how you can access the water pump and and water filter area, that sort of thing. Um, the water heater has to be bypassed uh, so before you pump antifreeze into it, so if you're going to do it yourself and you don't know, you'll have to educate yourself a bit. But that's where you would find it back there. Okay. So the main thing to know, there's two things to know about this bathroom. One, it's got, it's got a shower miser, right? So what this is is a recirculator. So the thinking behind it is if you're in a drought area and you're waiting for the water to get hot, all that water goes down the drain and is wasted. Another way to look at it is you have limited storage in your gray tank. So when you're waiting for the water to heat up, you're filling your you're dumping gallons of water into your gray storage tank when you don't really need to. It's a waste of space. So this recirculates it. You put it like this and uh, you'll turn on the hot water and it'll just cycle around and around and around. It does not go through the complete plumbing cycle so um, it'll just go through the water pump back around in a loop. I'm sorry, the water heater tank back around into a loop. So when it, 